we're down to the final chapter, which is chapter 11, dealing with stockholders equity section. In our homework problem, which is problem 11-2A, and if you notice, I posted on Blackboard, I changed it from what the syllabus said, 11-4A. So 11-2A deals with a company that already is in business. It has preferred stock and common stock. We have this information up over here. We also have paid in capital in excess of power for preferred stock, paid in capital in excess of stated value for common stock, retained earnings, and treasury stock. I'll explain each of these in a minute. We have transactions that have happened during the year. They've asked us to journalize these entries, prepare the T accounts, and then finally the stockholders equity section at December 31st, 2017. So let, let me quickly recap what we have over here. A company, if it has only one type of stock, that's ownership in a company, we call it common stock. Sometimes a company may issue preferred stock as well. Preferred always means preferred as to dividends. That is, if dividends are being declared, preferred stockholders will get dividends before common stockholders. In that case, the dividend rate is known ahead of time. In this case, it's 7%. What happens if dividends are not declared one year? Well, common stockholders get nothing. What happens to the preferred stockholders? Depends on whether they are cumulative or non-cumulative preferred stocks. So in this case, they have specified and told us they are non-cumulative, which means in a particular year, if dividends are not paid, that year is gone. They're not going to get that money. If it's cumulative, they will get last year's as well as this year's whenever dividends are paid. They are authorized to issue a total of 5,000 shares. They haven't told us how many they've actually issued, but we can calculate that. $300,000 divided by $10 per share tells me that they have issued 3,000 shares so far. So what I've done over here in my notes is I wrote down preferred stock, they are authorized to issue 5,000 shares. They have issued 3,000 shares. Okay, so I'll leave that information over there for a minute. Common stock, there is no power value, but the stated value, which is similar to power value, is $4. They're authorized to issue 300,000 shares. So common stock, they're authorized to issue 300,000. How many are actually issued? 1 million divided by 4 will tell me how many are issued. The number issued is 250,000. That's 1 million divided by 4. That many have been issued. These stock were issued in excess of power or in excess of stated value, which basically means when I sold the preferred stock and asked for $100, I got more than $100. When I sold the common stock and asked for $4, I got more than $4. That's the in excess of par. Skip the retained earnings for a second. Treasury stock are those shares that the company buys back. So I bought back my own common stock and I'm holding it in treasury. What could I do with treasury shares? It's kind of like an asset, but they're my own shares. I could sell it again. I could give it to someone. So typically you would give it to your own employees. I could sell it to my employees at a discounted rate, or I could actually retire it, which means it will no longer be issued. There are many things I can do with it. But effectively what we're looking at over here is the company has 5,000 shares in treasury, which means what's outstanding is 245,000. The reason this is important is dividends are always paid only on outstanding shares. They're not paid on the total authorized. They're not paid on the issued. They're paid on what's outstanding. Now for the preferred stock, nothing was mentioned over here. So the assumption is all 3,000 that were issued are still outstanding. Let's take a look at what else happened during the year and how those numbers may get affected. So on Feb 1st, we issued another 5,000 shares of common stock for $30,000. So on Feb 1st, I issued shares, which means I got cash. The amount of cash I got, I know, is $30,000. I issued common stock. The stated value is 
5,000 times 4, the amount of money that went towards the common stock is 20,000. So what happens to this extra 10,000 I got? That's the amount that I call paid in capital in excess of stated value. That's $10,000. So I asked for 20,000, I got 30,000, which means I got 10 extra from investors. Obviously my stocks are in demand. Again, the T accounts I've opened relate only to the stockholders equity section. So let me do the posting. Common stock on the credit side, 20,000. Paid in capital in excess of power for common stock. I'll put the 10,000 over here. On March 20th, I purchased 1,000 additional shares of common treasury stock at $7 a share. So I bought back my own shares. When I buy back my own shares, I debit treasury stock, and this is a contra equity account, which means it's a, a deduction in the stockholders equity section. I paid cash for this, 1,000 times $7 a piece. So 7,000 is what I paid for it. Treasury stock, I debit $7,000. On October 1st, I declared 7% cash dividend or the preferred stock, which is payable on November 1st. So on October 1st, when I declared the dividends, I'll debit an account called dividends declared, or I could call it cash dividends. It's a temporary account. It's going to close at the end of the period, so it's not that significant. It doesn't go over into your balance sheet. Dividends payable. I've not yet paid it. I'll pay it a month later. Why do we have this lag? Typically because these stocks trade frequently, and we want to let stockholders know whoever holds the stock on November 1st, they are the ones who are going to get the dividends. Not the person who holds it a day before, not the person who holds it a day later, or November 1st, whoever is a stockholder. So we kind of want them to give time to decide whether they want to get that dividend income or not. So the 7% cash dividends, you're looking at $100 times 7% is $7, and I have 3,000 shares that were outstanding. Remember, that's the number that's significant. The outstanding shares, they are the ones who are going to get the dividends. $7 times 3,000 is going to give me $21,000. So I have dividends declared 21,000, dividends payable credit 21,000, and I'm not going to worry about it. It's a liability account, and I'm going to pay off the liability in the next journal entry. So when I pay the liability, it's dividends payable debit, cash credit, and I pay off the 21,000. This is a liability account. This is an asset account. I have my T accounts only for my stockholders equity accounts here. December 1st, I declared a 50 cent per share cash dividend to my common stockholders on record on the 15th and I will pay it to the shareholders on the 31st. So I'm saying on December 1st, whoever holds the stocks on December 15th will get the dividends and the check will go out on December 31st. So here my journal entry is gonna be dividends declared debit, dividends payable credit, 50 cents per share. How many shares do I have? I have Five, uh, 30, uh, 250,000 had said initially were issued. Then if you recall, I sold more shares. So I sold five more thousand shares. Treasury stock, I had 5,000 and I bought back another thousand. So what were the balances at the end of the year? Oops. I have issued 255,000 common shares. Treasury is 6,000, which means my outstanding, and this is the number I'm interested in, 249,000. They are the ones who are going to get the 50 cent per share. So 
So the 50 cent per share is 124,500 on the 249,000 shares. On December 15th, the stockholders on, on record are going to get the dividends. We don't have to do any journal entry over here. I'm just writing over here, December 15th, no entry, but you would do nothing. A company would do nothing in their books on that day. On the 31st, they're going to pay the dividends. That journal entry is similar to what we had over here. We already know the amount we're going to pay, and the amount is 124,500. Okay. The company has said their net income is $280,000. Net income is basically revenues minus expenses. Those journal entries for revenues and expenses have taken place throughout the year. At the end of the year, I'm going to close those accounts. So I have to close this account to income summary. Net income was close to income summary. Now income summary will be close to retained earnings, which is basically the net income number coming into retained earnings, $280,000. That's a 280 I'm going to put over here. Okay. Post this one here. Now these dividend declared accounts, those are temporary accounts. Dividends are paid out of retained earnings. So my last journal entry is to close the dividend declared account to retained earnings. So I had dividends declared for the preferred stockholders 21,000 for the common stockholders it was 124,500. You add up the amounts and the total amount I paid out of retained earnings. As 144,500. Now you could have done retained earnings, debit, dividends, payable, credit. It would not be incorrect, but that's the same argument like saying each time we have expenses and revenues. If I each time I have an expense, again theoretically I could debit retained earnings instead of debiting the expense account. If I have a revenue, I could say credit to retained earnings instead of going to the revenue account, but we don't do that. For the same reason, we have this dividends declared account, which we maintain separately. Okay, now that we've taken care of all of our journal entries over here, let me scroll over here so we can see this. Okay, let me go through my T accounts and see what they're gonna look like. Preferred stock, there were no additional preferred stock issued. We paid dividends on it, but it didn't affect the preferred stock or the excess for the preferred stock account. Common stock, I did issue more common stock. So the new balance I have ending balance is 1,020,000. For the paid in capital in excess of preferred common stock, it's 490. Retained earnings, add up the debit side, add up the credit side, take the difference. And that's what you'll have over here in the retained earnings account. My treasury stock is 47,000. Dividends declared, that account should close out. We closed it out to retained earnings, so it should be a zero balance. So that's not going to appear in your balance sheet. It's these accounts that are going to appear in your balance sheet. Okay, now, there was a reason why I went through this process of showing you these numbers. In the balance sheet, a company will identify the two types of stocks they have, common stock, preferred stock. They have to tell what the par value or the stated value of the stock is, the number of shares, authorized, issued, and outstanding. And finally, obviously, if they have any treasury stock. So this information is relevant and we need to use it. So I'm gonna scroll over here once more and show you the information. So I'll start with preferred stock. So for preferred stock, the information I'm gonna write down is, I have preferred stock, $100 par value, 7% non-cumulative. I'm authorized to issue 5,000 shares. I have issued 3,000 and all 3,000 are outstanding. So I'll say issued an outstanding 3,000 shares. And that dollar amount is 300,000. I brought that from the T account. Then I'll say common stock, 
$5 stated value. I'm authorized to issue 300,000. I issued 255,000, but outstanding are only 249. How did I get that 249? Issued minus treasury is what's outstanding. So that's $1,020,000. Then I'll write down what the patent capital nexus of power is and stated value for the preferred and common stock respectively. I just got those from those T accounts, all these dollar amounts. That part was relatively easy. My total paid in capital is $1,825,000. This is how much money the stockholders have paid into the business. After that, I'll list retained earnings. And this is what the stockholders are concerned with. This is their money, they gave this money. The question is, what has the company done with that money? And they're always interested in this retained earnings number. Now, one final number to post, uh, bring in over here is the treasury stock. So I'll write less treasury stock. And here in parentheses, I can identify how many shares I have, 6,000 common shares in treasury. It's a contra equity account. So you subtract the $47,000 to give you the final number. Total stockholders equity is $2,600,500. So a check figure they've given us in the problem is the total paid in capital, 1825 and that's the number we have over here, 1825 That's a total paid in capital. So this concludes the homework series that we have here on Panapto. I hope this has been helpful. Send me an email if you have any questions about this problem or any others as you go along.